we don't want to go hard down. So. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're calling uh, into session the hearing on Senate Bill 110 related yeah, to agriculture. Proposed SD1 amends Hawaii's Right to Farm Act to ensure that counties can enact laws ordinances or resolutions that limit the rights of farmers and ranchers to engage in modern farming and ranching practices. It's a re recommending that we insert the proposed substantive provisions of the Senate Draft 1 and recommit the short-form bill back to the committee for further consideration. And uh, there was a recommendation that we pass the amendments and to recommit it to I committed earlier about the quorum issue and is a quorum of the members, majority members, members, present. members present. And on the Ag Committee, we have uh, Senator Sloan, Senator English, Senator uh, Pucci, myself, and Senator Thiel. So we do have. Well, you're on your yeah. committee. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're all here, with the exception of one, right? <laughs> so we pretty much is we have a quorum. They're putting a language in the contested uh, okay. bill into a new and bill to try and pass it forward. Explaining all of that, are we ready to take the vote? We're going to have discussion. We have a discussion. Yes. Okay. How's your opportunity to weigh in and okay, say whatever you wish to, as far as members go? Okay, so I'm going to be voting no on this um, on this procedural vote, um, mainly because I also supported county home rule. I believe in allowing the counties to make their own decisions and also make their own mistakes. Um, coming from the county council, um, you know they operate under very strict um, rules already, and you know I think that as we mature as a state, the counties need to be able to make their own decisions, need to have home rule. Um, I think this is a dangerous slippery slope in that, uh, you know, we could end up with, let's say we want to preempt the counties from doing, oh, I don't know, land use, um, or we want to preempt the counties from uh, regulating uh, subdivisions. Uh, it's just very dangerous. And, you know, what happens, how we feel here when the federal government preempts us on something, um, it's the same way that the counties feel. So I, you know, I appreciate what your your intent, but I'm going to be voting now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is that Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll be voting yes because I want a public hearing. We've had an awful lot of people weighing in pro and con, and I think they deserve the right to be heard. So oh, they can be heard on the previous bill. Jesus. There's already a bill. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to be voting no. I, ironically, I agree with Senator Slom that I think we should have a hearing on this issue because people do feel very passionate, and I think they have the um, right to have the opportunity to be heard. But that said, uh, we have a bill that is in play already, Senate Bill 3058, which is the Right to Farm Act. And I feel that um, the practice and procedure has been to use short-form bills only when you don't have a bill available to you uh, and, the, and the introduction deadline has passed. And I think given right. the high attention to this matter, um, to, to go this route just raises a lot of questions in people's minds that you know it's not fair and I think we should just have a, a hearing on the original bill. Yep. Yep. Chair. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I believe we've had a hearing. Uh, the hearing was held last year. The suggested amendments you have uh, closely reflect the bill that I voted against after the hearing was concluded last year. And since the language essentially is the same, I don't see how uh, my vote is changing at this time. So I'll be voting no as well. <laughs> Well, I guess um, I have some comments to make. You know, the, uh, this issue is never going to be decided on this vote at this time or this year. I, I hope you had a good recording of Clarence Nishihara's speech. I think that speech by itself can be extracted and people should pour over it. I always believe it's good to hear the strongest articulation of a, an opponent's point of view 
and go through it and examine it, the information and the misinformation that it contains, and deal with each argument one at a time and hopefully defeat each argument. And I think it's possible, and I think that uh, he's provided us an opportunity to do that. This issue is not going to be decided on this vote at this time or this year. Because the issues that come up are related to GMO and pesticides and labeling and all of that will continue long after the session's over. It will be fought in the courts, it will be fought over numerous different places. So this is not the end of it. And I think what we've done is that by not taking a position on this, we've only added to it continuing. I've always believed that there was no particular bill that would finally bring the measure a conclusion because people feel that differently from that they will then take it up and fight it in the courts that's I guess the American way so although this bill was attempting to move a particular measure forward that's right. and uh, it was going to be an uphill climb no matter what and there were passions on both sides I myself feel that, and I've said it in a number of times to other people, that although the counties may feel they've been preempted, my sense of it is, if the counties really had the wherewithal in their agencies of government or the resources they're in, and they could expedite these measures one way or the other, then they would not have to come hat in hand to the state to say, we need support. We need the money to do this. We want you to do this. So it ends up here. It ends up here. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think whatever it ends up is the end of the matter. Because this is the movement on those issues that have gone across the United States, gone through Canada, gone worldwide, and it's about the science. It's about the science of the things. It's about what is considered um, good agricultural practices. It's about what's good um, uh, modern agriculture. I think we go back and forth on that. Some people's concept of what is modern agriculture excludes any kind of technology that enhances the production of food, which means that, as a result, GMOs are a no no. Other people have a different view. In the scientific community, the preponderance, the preponderance of, of uh, the, the data and the studies and the research says it's a safe technology. But as long as there's even a grain, a grain of doubt, then you're not going to get a complete agreement. There will always be people who believe that technology is dangerous, the technology is, uh, should not be done. But the irony of it all is they consider the consumption of food as the most invasive thing that they can do to their bodies. Yet we accept even more invasive things. There's the flu vaccines which have been modified. We accept other things that we take as transplants or we take as other kinds of technology which we accept. So the thing is, to have a real rational discussion is what I hope that we could do. And I will keep trying to work to get that opportunity to have a rational discussion where people on both sides can speak. But I tell you what, before we can deal with the rational part, we have to extract some of the emotionality of these things and let's deal with science to science, data to data, and let the balance weigh itself. But some people, no matter how the way is, will never accept it because they think the little bit of weight that they have here trumps the vast majority of the view. And we'll never get there. And truly, in the kind of society we wish to have, if we're going to continue to maintain these kind of views, they will not move us forward, they'll help us grow food for the rest of the world, or prepare um, a support for farmers when they're changing climatic conditions will warrant it. Will warrant it. At what point will we say, God, we should have done this thing? 
We should have done this thing. We should have gone the extra step and looked at it because we want to block our minds for not going, going forward. This is where we want to be. We want to stay there, where we are, keeping everything there is, because what we believe, or some of us believe, what is conventional, uh, what is tr uh, traditional in their mind is to grow agriculture like it did back in the 20s, or the 30s, or the 40s, maybe up to the 50s or 60s, until we get to the 70s when all of a sudden technology pops up, and we say, no, we're going back to where it was at the very beginning. We are not a country of farmers today. We are not a country where um, maybe 40% of the people were engaged in farming. We're not there. 1% now does that. 1% feeds all of us, <coughs> most of the world, in what they do. And to me, we do a disservice to farmers, we do a disservice to ranchers, and we have, ultimately we do a disservice to consumers. Because we believe, some of us believe, that it's not the technology we should go forward with. And at some point, I ask, <coughs> when do we move forward? <coughs> when do we make our sense of what we are, what's rational? Extract the emotion from what holds us here. I've always believed before we could get to whatever a rational discussion was, to get to our head, we have to get through what is here, the emotion. And unfortunately, if science only ran in emotion, we wouldn't be looking at the stars today. The world would still be considered to be why, at some point, religious organizations said the world and the center of the universe was the earth. And they were willing to put someone to death for it when they're having a different view, a scientific view. So at one point, we say science matters. At one point, we say we teach education for science, and at the other hand, we reject it in the public. Where are we going as a people? Where are we going? And I think people in this room should really think about that. I get, I, my, my daughter teaches science. She doesn't teach maybe good, maybe whatever kind of, well, I feel kind of science. And I think we should ask ourselves, what kind of country do we want? What kind of society do we want? What kind of community do we want? Are we going to reject anything that's because it doesn't seem to fit with our view that we shouldn't move forward? Ask ourselves that. And that's the question. That's not on the map. That's not on this bill. That's not on what we're voting on. So, on that tirade and my view, <laughs> since I got the gavel, <laughs> <laughs> we're now going to take the vote. Go ahead. Attorney okay. Shiara? Aye. Aye. Vice Chair votes no. Senator Dela Cruz? Aye. Senator English? No. Senator Thielen? No. Senator Wakai, excuse? Okay, let me explain. Senator Slow? Aye. Wants to vote? Yeah. Three, three. It's 3-3. Three, three. And then the 3-3, three, three, the way it operates in this, in, this, uh, in this legislature, the measure dies. The measure dies. Yay. Three, three. No, hey, 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 hey. That's good. I tell you what, I'll throw you out. You said clapping. <laughs> okay, no clapping, no cheering, no whatever, no high fives. Okay, the measure is dead. Say anything? I gotta tell Babes Against Biotech, we just beat the Hawaii Monsanto Protection Act <laughs> today. This today. one today. No, We're still watching. Still there's still the one with the uh, the language. But the 50 reason is because it has so many referrals right. and Green's on one of those referrals, and they know Senator Green's not going to pass the freaking Hawaii Monsanto right. Protection Act. Hello, he's a medical doctor. He supports GMO labeling. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about Senator Green because he's awesome. But uh, this is great. This is great. I feel like we should have a little. A little party, a little... <laughs> I mean, not too much. We have a lot more work to do. They'll probably try something again tomorrow, no, but 3058 is probably dead in the water because if it's not on a second-to-last hearing by February 6th, legislative timeline, which is why they tried to pull uh, That's it. why they tried to do yes, it. Yes, but the short-form bill is supposed to be for emergencies. Right, right. Not emergency, please, please support my campaign and give me money. I'll hold, I'll hold a hearing for a horrible so bill you for think, you. You know, the, the room was packed. You think uh, public uh, participation had anything to do with uh, defeating uh, the bill? I sure do. I sure do, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm th we're thanking all the people that called and wrote and, and yes, came out. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. Ha we're still live. You want to give us a little reaction of what happened, why it happened? You know, I want to say mahalo plenty to Senator Wankochi, Senator English from Maui, and Senator Thielen for showing the leadership they did today. 
Uh, Senator Kochi, as you know, is from Kauai, and this yeah. is very important to our community. The community is all over. Uh, so I want to malama them and tell them uh, thank you very much. I was surprised by a Kochi's vote. I wasn't surprised at you all. Weren't surprised. You weren't know, Last year, Senator Kochi uh, voted the same way. Ah, he did not okay. support a similar bill, and so he's being consistent and supporting uh, supporting the people in the community. So, Great. Thank you, Senator Kochi. Great. Thank you, Gary, for coming out here. Okay, let's see.